trap. This guy's a lunatic. This guy's a lunatic. In this video, I have squeezed in a bit of an update of what I'm seeing in the retail space in Sydney, Australia. I know some of my audience may be curious to see what's gone on after the Prime Minister said, stop hoarding. I've been having some fun uh, controlling the rats around the backyard and uh, I've got a good method for getting them into the cage here, the trap, because we're all humane these days. You can't do anything nasty to these poor little critters. Um, this is a baby one, or should I say a younger one, because it's winter time and this is when the young sort of get about. It's actually rather cute when they're that size. Rather tricky to focus on a uh, little rat there, it moves around a lot, focus goes crazy. It's actually just got a blueberry there and that's one of the secrets to me getting this rat into this trap and it took me quite a while to understand the way to effectively get these little rodents uh, without wasting a lot of time as I was doing it's yeah, it's so cute you want to sort of keep it but unfortunately they're a bit of a pest part of the radicus home is down in these rocks here because I put cameras out at night I've been seeing what goes on if I pulled these rocks apart I dare say I would find something quite radicus inside there and what I notice here, and this might be a very good sign to keep the spider the way, is I see some grand ant activity going on down on the Tonka Grader. Now I'm shooting this, I'll call it the, well, the last stages of winter. Redback spiders and all will be getting ready for um, the spring and summertime. And I, I can only assume there's possibly an ant nest or something very anty going on around here. I don't want to disturb it too much. I tell you what, if I'm seeing ant activity, I know one thing I won't see, hopefully, and that is spider activity. In fact, if you look carefully, on the small hole on the tire of that toy, I can see ants coming and going. Hmm, quite curious to see. Just back on to Mrs. or Mrs. Uh, baby Radicus there, not sure if it's a boy or a girl, I think it's a bit young to tell that. And next time we see this cage, I'll be at the release area. Okay, I'm on a bush track. It's not a national park. That's very important to indicate. You can't take anything or add anything to a national park. Uh, if I kept going down that way, that would be the redback spider car, but I don't go down there anymore because that's old history. I'm trying to find a little bit of sunny area to release this rodent, and I think just about there will do. Somewhere here, and the rat can go flying off in that direction. I'm going to be very low tech, I'm just going to put the camera on the ground here, it's a GoPro, hopefully we'll get a slow-mo of the rat exiting the cage, going The rat's going to have to jump over that little bit of quartz there, I'll just check if it's got a bit of gold first. No, I think that's okay. My crikey's when the sun drops, it drops fast, here we go, hopefully we're going to get this on camera, the GoPro. Go little one, go! <laughs> oh, uh, it went off in that direction! Don't you feel warm and fuzzy now? I don't. Maybe next thing we'll see is how I set up this to catch another rodent. Hey, woo! Okay, this is the next day. I was going to show you how to set up the trap, but guess what? I set the trap again last night, and I get success night after night now because I set the trap up in a very uh, particular way. Ooh, where is the little one there? It's another small, very cute rodent. Okay, very... My crocky's very lively. Let me show you how I set up this trap. Okay, I put the rodent and the cage down on the bench here. We're going to have a bit of a talk about how I set this up. It took me quite some time to understand how to attract a rodent into this cage and get it to trigger every time. Okay, it's the way it's set up which is really important. <laughs> Man, it took me ages and the way I learnt a lot about what was going on was I was using those cameras like that. They're the wireless like security cameras. Man, I've taken so much footage of um, rats eating stuff out of rat cages, it's not funny. But when I saw the way they operate and how quickly they could come in, basically lean on their back legs and empty out this whole trigger area, I thought to myself, I've got to set this up in a different way. I'll re-explain how I set up the trap. I tried to do it live and it became very klutzy and clumsy. 
The food the rodents were being attracted to at this time, although this does change over time, is dried blueberries and the biscuity cat food that Fluffy Cat eats. It's succulent chicken, cheese and vegetable flavours that looks more grand than most people's dinners. I set the food up on the pressure plate area and you have to glue it down. I was using super glue and this stops the rats from basically eating off the pressure plate because they're very smart at using their back legs and not putting too much weight on the pressure plate. And that food has to be on the far end of the pressure plate. That's really important to do. If you're having trouble getting the rats to come into these cages, I was sprinkling a little bit of food prior to the pressure plate to get them comfortable being inside these traps. What I've noticed is rats are extremely cautious. They don't take too many risks. And between setting up the traps, when I release a rodent, I thoroughly scrub down the trap. And I also always wear gloves when I'm setting up the trap and gluing in new food because I want this trap to have no scent of me on it or else the rats will get fairly wary. So at this time, the dried blueberries and cat food was working, but after I caught a few rodents, all of a sudden, they wouldn't come to that food anymore. You've got to keep changing it up or down to trick these little rodents' very clever brain. I witnessed a very interesting behavior that has gone on when one rat is in the trap. Sometimes another rat will come along and try to assist the trapped rat in escaping. Initially, I did not understand what was going on because I never knew that rats could display empathy. And it wasn't until recently I saw this activity happen again on a far grander scale. And it was two male rats who seemed to be very closely bonded together and I witnessed some amazing efforts by one rat trying to free its little buddy. I started to Google this idea. Of course, two male rats helping each other. And it starts to go down a very interesting bunny hole of ideas. Maybe some of my audience can elaborate and explain on this. But please keep it clean. Remembering we are dealing with a very, very sensitive style of YouTube these days. I can't emphasize enough to understand my rat problem and to get the right trap and set up correctly. Well, I had to see what was going on first. That's why these cameras here were really, really important in understanding what was going on. Uh, without seeing what was going on at night, I had no idea of the scope and scale of my problem. This is what was wrapped around the rat cage when I bought it. This is a catch alive thing. The whole industry seems to be either catch alive or catch and kill. So that's humane because, well, it's humane as long as you release a rodent alive. And then uh, there's a whole industry of things. Of course, there's poisons. Uh, there's things that, you know, trap stations, uh, electronic things like that. I tried one of these, but I found out that the rodents were a little bit too big for that. It's a whole, you got to understand the scale of things. Possibly a trap like this would work, but this is not humane in a sense. I don't know how you set this up, and if I play with that enough, I'm going to bite myself. For smaller mice, when we've had a house mouse, uh, I found these to be excellent, but they had to be set up in a very particular way, and it was often peanut butter or something as a lure, and boy, when they go off, uh, it's good night, sister, little rodent. All sorts of things, there's glues, uh, more of those things over here, like more traditional things like that. Um, of course, uh, strange things like that, that um, do some sort of choking thing, horrible th thing. But in the end, uh, what's really important is to understand your problem, get the correct trap, and make sure that it's actually effective because the industry seems to be pack loaded with all sorts of things that seem amazing, but uh, sometimes they're not. I've got a couple little test pilots here. Yeah, and one thing I don't like about these styles of traps is, and I've seen it happen at my place, is sometimes a wrong critter gets caught in these traps. Okay, it could be some sort of skink. Okay, it might be some little friend of the garden. And uh, if that little critter comes along and tr triggers it, uh, they, their history, and they, I've never seen one of these go off. Let's just see what this does to the elf. Ooh, crikey, that would have really hurt. So yes, uh, it is not nice when you trap the wrong little critter in these traps. It's nice when you get the right one, but uh, when you get the wrong one, well, this thing is very, very powerful. It's not nice at all. Whoa! 
Next thing for me to do is basically take our rodent friend here, uh, take it somewhere far away from home so it doesn't come back here, and make sure it's safe. Okay, going out along a bush track, hopefully not National Park, a long way from where I live to release a little rodent. Maybe here's a nice spot and the rodent will dart off that way. As I know for other releases, nothing's ever certain. Even a nice little rock here to mount the GoPro, like that. Okay, I've got the GoPro started. It's just a matter of uh, levering this in the right direction, remembering how to do it, or I think this is going to be a runner. Okay, go little one, go. Oh, freedom! Lovely thing. I can hear it, uh, but I can't see it. It's down in amongst that scrubbery there. There we go. Another very warm and fuzzy moment for this wondrous video. There's some hoon up on the road there. Oh my god. Look at that. There's a smoke. I think he's doing donuts and stuff. And he's taken off at high speed. Whoa, that was action. This is where those donuts were going on. Oh, crikey, Charlie's. That was uh, quite exciting. A lot of smoke. I can still smell the burnt rubber. Ah, uh, yes, look at that there. Fresh tire marks. Naughty, naughty boy. But crikey, that was exciting. Okay, I've got the trap set up for another night's catch. I've got the mix of food in there this time around. I think that's going to work. In fact, I'm sure it's going to work. I'll put the Arlo camera somewhere here like that. Okay, yeah. Ready to go. That's what the Arlo camera sees, nice live preview there. They are motion activated, they're awesome, they let you see exactly what's going on. It's another beautiful morning and it's another capture. And this is the trap that I set up, maybe as part of this video, I don't know how this video is gonna come together. It was the one where I had the mixed berries and the cat food. And I can see that, well, this rat's got into both. I'm pretty sure most people are going to say, why didn't you put peanut butter into the trap and that will smear onto the plate there. What I found with peanut butter was very simple, that it would attract slugs and other things in the garden, and it wasn't really attracting the rodents. The real secret is, find the foods that the rodents are going for, and then make sure that food is adhered to the trap area where it gets triggered. The scary part for me is I'm starting to lose count of how many guys that I've captured like this and I know there's a lot more to go. Come on little buddy, off to freedom. Another little fella about to be released to freedom. Hoping it'll dart off in that direction. I'm getting quite used to this actually. Okay, go little fella, go. Oh yeah, nice work. Again, I've got that very warm and very, very fuzzy feeling. I've got a lot of video that the Arlo cameras captured, and it taught me the behavior of what was going on around the traps. That's very important to understand because it allowed me to see how smart these rodents are. I could also see that, of course, we've got possums in the backyard. Sometimes I saw them around the traps. I could also see there were other cats getting about, actually quite a number of other cats getting about, but I wasn't seeing those cats capturing the rats. The rats seemed to be very, very smart in knowing when the cats were around. And as I saw in the other video, and you've seen this already, that Fluffy Cat was being stood up by rats. The rats were having a go at Fluffy. And seeing that also taught me more about the behaviour of these rats. Or maybe said the other way around, the lack of behaviour from our cat. The time of year I had the big problem with the rats was basically June, July and August. It's the winter time in Australia, mind you. The winter that this was going on was a very mild winter. We had this bubble of hot temperature in July and I did the video about the red back spider that thought it was the beginning of spring in the middle of winter. And there were stories in the papers about rat infestations going on because it was really dry and quite mild in temperature. 
And little did we know, it was also just prior to the time when we had a really bad fire season that cranked off in spring and went for the best part of summer. As I've said over and over, the little security cameras that I was using allowed me to see what was going on. It showed me how many rodents were getting about, and it also showed me that the large mature rodents are very smart, and they adapt very quickly to what I was doing in the backyard to try and capture them. The little ones weren't so smart. In fact, I started to understand how the little ones worked, and they often would do exactly the same thing, and they wouldn't learn that fast. But those older rodents, and some of these rodents were very big, were very smart and near impossible to catch. In fact, they were impossible to catch. And when you see a rat, which is nearly the size of the rat trap that you got, that's starting to be scary. I know some people get annoyed when they see me humanely capturing rats and then releasing them because it basically passes the problem on to someone else. I had to move to another style of rat trap because the numbers I was getting was way out of control. The rats were starting to get smart. They started to avoid the humane traps. So in comes the other styles of traps. But I had to be careful there because there are some creatures in the backyard that are my friends. You don't want to harm them. And I had to set these other styles of traps up very carefully. And as I learned from watching the video around these other styles of traps, the rats could sometimes defeat the trap. They would be faster than the trap. Or they could learn to feed from the trap without triggering the trap. And it got to a point where they started to understand that these traps were actually their enemy and then they wouldn't touch them at all. These guys are really, really smart. In the end, I was dealing with about 20 rodents. In fact, I started to lose count. Five months later, the second generation of rats came about. It was just after Christmas time. And luckily, I found a new food that the rats cannot resist. And I remember seeing many people comment on what attracts rats. And once I found this secret weapon... My crikeys, it attracted rats, it attracted lizards, it attracted birds, it attracted possums, it attracts everything. But I have not yet ever seen anyone say this style of food as the secret weapon to attract rats. I'll give you a clue, this secret weapon can be easily purchased from a takeaway store. It's got a very distinctive smell and they are very, very yummy. And I stumbled across this find really by accident. It was a wonderful accident to have because once you have a really good bait for these rodents, you can then use the humane traps and catch as many as you want. I'll tell you what, I do have a fair bit of respect for rodents after seeing the way they operate. They're very smart, they're very good at adapting, and they are survivors. But unfortunately, and this is the sad part, they can be very, very dangerous and destructive. Some of you may have lasted up to the end of the video here and wondering, hey Leo, what's going on in the retail space? What are you seeing on the shelves where you live? And I think the only way I can describe this is we have hit absolute rock bottom. You can't get any worse than whole areas that are totally stripped out within a retail space. What seems to have happened after the Australian Prime Minister said to the population, stop hoarding, the exact reverse has happened. By saying stop hoarding, it was like holding out a red rag to a bull. Maybe he should have said, start hoarding, and the reverse would have happened. Apart from nothing on the shelves, unemployment in Australia is going completely through the roof. There are so many people who have lost their jobs. There are so many businesses now which are closed down for multiple reasons that I can't fully explain here. But what's going on is something that I've never ever seen before. I am getting another retail study video together. And this time it will be done in video form. You have to be very careful in the retail space at the moment because everything's being set to the maximum price. I keep saying to myself, this must be a dream. I'm going to wake up out of this and I'll be back to a normal day. But no, that's not happening.